Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So this is the Toyota Tundra full-size pickup truck and I'm going to review it for your viewing pleasure. Also, if you're in the market for a pickup truck, I'm going to help you decide if it's the right pickup for you. Now to do that, I'm going to talk you around its design. What's that CarWow stick of truth? Show you what it's like inside. Uh... Explain how practical it is. You could quite literally go to sleep here. And of course, take it for a drive. Don't get carried away in the Tundra. Now, before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. That way, you won't miss any of our videos. Let's kick off this review by talking about the Tundra's design. Now, it's quite an old truck now, so it's got quite a basic look. There are various creases to give it some form of shape, and you've got Tundra stamped into the tailgate. Moving down the side, you'll see an honest, old-fashioned exhaust pipe. No fake surrounds here. Then you've got pronounced wheel arches, pretty much just like most trucks. And wheel sizes from 18 inches to 20s. There's more creases here on the doors, once again, to give it a bit more stance on the road. You've got your Tundra badging to tell people what truck you're driving. And the important badge, which says you've got a V8 under the hood. Speaking of the hood, it's actually quite rounded compared to some of the more modern trucks. Once again, that's because it's getting on a bit. The grille's quite nice though. I do like the design of that. And you can get it in chrome on the very top spec version, though I think I prefer it in this black. Also, the surround of the grille changes colour depending on which model you go for. When I say changes colour, I mean you get different colours. You get me. Also, you've got some vents here, but they look fake. They definitely don't lead anywhere. Then with TRD models, you get a big bulge on the bonnet. Yet again, that looks fake. And I'll just Test it with my pocket-sized Carwow twig of truth. Oh yes, that goes nowhere. I'll just check this one as well while I'm at it. Yeah, that leads nowhere. There is no fooling the Carwow stick of truth. What's that Carwow stick of truth? You prefer the look of the Ford F-150? Well, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that truck, just click on the pop-out banner up there. I never thought I'd see the day I was talking to twigs. Here on the inside, the Tundra sort of lives up to its name because it's rather sparse and lifeless. Yes, the design feels a bit old compared to the very, very latest trucks. There is little bits of silvery trim about the place to help liven things up a bit, but generally, other than that, it's a sea of black drab plastic, and the plastics themselves are all pretty hard and cheap feeling, no matter where you touch. You do have soft materials here where you put your arms and up here, but overall, it does just feel basic and a touch cheap. There are a few things I do like though. The huge climate control dials, very easy to hit when you're driving. Also, the layout is very, very simple. So you've got your switch control down there for your four wheel drive system, all the stuff for your mirrors and exterior lighting down here. So it is very, very sensibly laid out. Also, you've got a central touch screen there and that brings me on to this car's specs. The Tundra range kicks off with the SR model and older versions have a 6.1 inch touchscreen. But from 2020, they get a seven inch touchscreen with built-in satellite navigation. The navigation's kind of a bit old fashioned and unresponsive. Fortunately though, you're also gonna be able to get it with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can just use your phone's mapping instead. You do have some useful shortcut buttons, which take you through the menus, but it does once again feel old fashioned. But you do have satellite radio built in. Overall though, this infotainment system doesn't feel the sharpest and the graphics are a little bit washed out, but it's easy to navigate. The SR also gets adaptive cruise control and safety kit, including auto emergency braking with pedestrian detection and lane departure warning. And thankfully, you get air conditioning too and a reversing camera. It also has a multifunction steering wheel so you can control the stereo and the little computer in between the dials which shows your trip information, your compass heading, your music station and various other bits and pieces as well. Next up is the SR5 and that has four wheel drive rather than just rear wheel drive and fog lamps. The next trim level up is the Limited and it gets a seven speaker stereo, LED headlights instead of the normal halogens are also included and it also gets a leather interior with heated front seats, leather steering wheel and automatic climate control. Next is the Platinum, which adds blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, a 12 speaker JBL stereo and seat ventilation. Finally, there's a 1794, which gets 20 inch alloy wheels and some fake wood on the steering wheel. Then there's the TRD pack. So this is the Sport and it gets some tuned anti-roll bars 
and Bilstein dampers. Then there's the TRD off-road, which has some off-road specific dampers. Then the TRD Pro adds to that a two inch lift. Anyway, let's continue this review by talking about connectivity because it isn't much as this is such an old vehicle. There is just one USB port and you have an auxiliary in underneath it. Doesn't matter too much because you do have 12 volt sockets either side like that. So you can charge mobile devices if you need to. As for cubby spaces, they're all right. So you've got a little tray area here, a cup holder here, though it is a little bit awkward. Some bigger cup holders there, which are more useful. There's a space here on the armrest where you can put your phone. I think when this was designed, phones weren't that big. It's just a happy coincidence. Underneath here, there's a huge storage area. Look, fit a big bottle of water in there, maybe two of them. And there's another 12 volt socket in there as well. There's another storage down here though. I'm not entirely sure what you're gonna put in there. It's probably just gonna gather dirt. And the door bins, unfortunately, are a little bit on the narrow side, even though they are quite long. As for the glove box, it's big, but it's mainly taken up by this huge manual. As for getting comfy behind the wheel, these seats are really nice. You've got electrical adjustment on this particular car. Obviously, that's not standard. Entry-level models get a single bench. <laughs> this is luxury, people. Right here, cloth seats with electrical adjustment. Yeah, it's actually easy to get comfy. There's enough adjustment in the steering wheel, and there isn't always on every single Toyota, especially of this vintage. There's also another little storage tray up here on the top of the dash. You can put your phone up there, but as soon as you accelerate, it's going to come flying backwards. The sun visors are nice and big and of course like they slide out so you can protect yourself from the sun as it moves round. You've got some place to store your glasses and somewhere for your tickets. You can just hang them up there. Anyway, that's what it's like here in the front. Let's check out the back seats. This is the Crew Max version of the Tundra, which is slightly bigger in the back than the normal Crew Cab. And as you can see, I've got limousine levels of space back here. I literally can stretch all the way out because the seats in front are raised up slightly. I can even get my toes underneath them. There's so much room. Decent headroom as well. These squidgy chairs are nice and comfy. It's got a very, very wide body as well, so you can sit three across no problem at all. The only issue is, is that this middle seat is a little bit firmer than the outer two, and they didn't really need to do that just to give these more of a contoured shape. You've got a pretty much flat floor, so there's plenty of room for everyone's feet as well. The huge space back here should make it easy to fit a child seat as well, the easy to access Isofix anchor points. It feels really light and airy back here because you've got such huge windows. The ledge is low as well, so kids can get a good view out. And as you can see, the windows go all the way down, which is great if you want to lean out or let some air in. You can fold this down. Look at that. That just seems a little bit cheap. You do have two very large cup holders there for supersized drinks. Smaller bottles are just going to rattle around, so you will have to use the side door bins there, which are narrower. They're exactly the same size as the front doors, pretty much. Just get out of the way. You have some storage here on the back of the passenger seat, but none on the back of the driver's seat. Don't know why. Maybe it's because that would annoy the driver. Not sure. If you need to charge mobile devices in the back, there is only one option. There's a single 12-volt socket there. That looks cheap as well, doesn't it? Hmm. I do like this feature though, look. You can flip up the seat bases if you need to carry things through here. I mean, look at the amount of space you've then got. Look at this. You could quite literally get to sleep here. <laughs> There's plenty of room. Let's talk about the low bed on this Tundra then. So the first thing to note is that you can't get it with an automated tailgate like you can on a Silverado. Also, once you fold the tailgate down, your step to get in has disappeared. So it's a little bit harder. Come on, work those glutes, Matt. There we go. Then the low bed itself, I mean, it's a decent size and shape. The maximum payload of the Tundra is 771 kilos, which is quite a bit less than the maximum payload of the Chevrolet Silverado. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that truck, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch it now. There are some tie-down points, but there's only one per corner. Another thing that's a little bit annoying, and that brings me on to five other annoying things about the Toyota Tundra. You may have radar-guided cruise control, which can keep you a safe distance of the car in front. Unfortunately, the whole system doesn't work in slow-moving traffic, so it won't shunt you along like the cruise control systems of many other normal cars. The reversing camera is really low definition. Also, the guidelines don't move when you're steering to help guide you into a space. You have a foot-operated parking brake, which is a bit more old-fashioned than a hand one. There's no single cab version available of this Toyota pickup truck. You're tied into having rear seats, whether you want them or not. Uh... 
For some reason, there is no grab handle on the driver's side. You get them everywhere else, and that's particularly frustrating on the truck I've got here because there are no running boards for me to step onto to get in, so... It's a bit harder than it needs to be. It's not all negative, though. Here's the Callway 5 core features. All the LED lights on the outside of the car have the exact same temperature rating, so in the dark, you have a nice, uniform colour of light. The whole section of the rear window goes all the way down. You don't get that on every pickup, you know. The Tundra has an impressive towing limit of up to 4.6 tonnes. The doors extend all the way down over the sills so they don't get covered in mud when you're off-roading, which means when you're getting in and out, you won't get muck all over the back of your trousers. The Tundra was the first four-size pickup to get a top pick for safety from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in the States. Right, then, let's talk about engines. Or should that be engine because there's only one it's this 5.7 litre v8 which has double overhead cams which is kind of rare in the pickup world anyway this thing puts out 544 newton meters of torque and 381 horsepower which is more horsepower than toyota sports car the new supra has in fact if you click on the pop-out banner up there you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car if you want to know how much the tundra costs it starts from thirty-three thousand dollars. though this one the sr5 trd sport is forty thousand dollars. this would be the point where i'd tell you to go to car wow to see how much you can save one of these but they don't sell these in the uk so you can't get them through car wow. but if you're watching in america why don't you check out edmunds.com that's another car comparison website and the link is in the description below so then, what's the Toyota Tundra like to drive? Well, the actual chassis has largely been unchanged for about a decade. They do minor updates each year, but it's quite an old thing underneath. Let's be honest about that. And it sort of fills it. I don't mind it too much. It's kind of a relaxing drive as you're just pootling around. But the steering is all kind of loose and vague, even by pickup truck standards. Then there's the ride quality. So over bumps, it just shimmies and shakes quite a lot. You feel it jiggling around. It's quite an unsettled thing. I imagine it would be better with a full load in the back to help weigh down those leaf springs. But even then, the very latest modern trucks will do better. One thing I do really like is the engine. It's smooth, it's quite creamy. It makes an all right noise as well. And the pulling power is okay as well. It's not kind of like knock your socks off Ford F-150 Raptor kind of quick, but it's quick enough. The gearbox though, sometimes can take a while to kick down. That's my only complaint really. Otherwise it's reasonably smooth. Now, most of the time people just be driving these things around the town or just steady on the highway. It's quite unusual to come out on a twisty road with one. Can it be fun? Hell no, it can't. I mean, it does just loll up in the bends. Well, ah, and it soon runs out of grip at the front. You don't want to push this thing too hard at all. Once again, it's slightly old underpinnings starting to betray it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> don't get carried away in the tundra. It won't thank you for it. Really though, that's not how you should be driving a pickup truck. And most people won't. But if you do want to push, your truck a little bit more than the average person you may be better off with a dodge ram which has slightly more sophisticated suspension and if you click on the pop-out banner up there in the top right hand corner of the screen you can see my full in-depth video review of that truck there is something just slightly kind of easy and relaxed that i do like about the tundra it's like driving something from the past So then, what's my final verdict on the Toyota Tundra? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Tundra. It's a fairly decent pickup truck. It's just that it hasn't received a major update in a very long time. And as a result, it's starting to feel its age compared to more modern pickups. Doesn't look real. In fact, I'm going to test it with my... It's gone. It's gone. I lost the car wire sticker, true. It fell out, or it escaped. It's got a mind of its own, that thing. 